Um, in this example, the currency pair got close to it, got within five pips or so of R3, but didn't touch it. Once it got within five or ten pips of R3, that's good enough for me. It just is might as well have hit it. Okay, so close is close enough. Here's another example. The currency pair hits R3. You can see that a candle, the very next candle, drops down and, and will have opened up some trades, right? It will have dropped down inside of that zone. It will have opened up some trades theoretically. It doesn't actually go 50 pips above where it was. Well, it goes about 50 pips. You're going to thin it out up there and then restack it. This candle right here would open up some trades. This dark candle right to the right of the purple arrow would open up some trades. They would thin out in this area, so you'd scale them down. You'd restack all of them that were there, and then they would open and take care of business. Yes. Yes. Here's another example. A currency pair rises up to R3, and then that's the profit target down there, the daily pivot. And you can see that it does, doesn't get to the daily pivot. It gets close to it. You want to be out by that time. That's why the buffer zone exists in the first place. Here's an S3 example. You can see in this example that the currency pair fell and hit S3, rose right back up and hit its daily pivot. Here's an example of a currency pair that fell and hit S3. And people said, oh my gosh, that would stop out. Well, no, it wouldn't because it didn't open any trades here. It had, it had to come back inside that zone to open any trades. So that's the example I was referring to earlier. In this example, it didn't really open up any trades until this area to the right. This is just a peaceful, misty picture to calm you down. Here's yesterday's vortex. Well, we have days where the currency pair hits its R3 on the same day that R3 was created. We also have experiences where um, the currency pair hits R3 from the previous day. These are actually some of my favorite vortex trades. And I call it a yesterday's vortex for the purpose of confusing you um, into buying something from me later on. <laughs> just kidding. I don't, don't even sell this. You can't even buy it. Um, yesterday's vortex is simply I extend a line out further from one day's R3 out into the future. And if it hits it, I act as if it hit it on the same day. Why? Because it's always still yesterday somewhere. Right? Think about it. And it falls the next day, not to the previous day's pivot, but to the new day's pivot. So a yesterday's vortex trade is a trade from and a stack from R3 on the previous day to the pivot on the next day. It's as if you're using an R3 or an S3 from a previous day to trade into the next day. And you could conceivably also see that the currency pair falls far enough to fall to the original daily pivot also. Here's a yesterday's vortex trade. You can see there's not very much room there. It hits the R3 from the previous day and then drops down and hits the new daily pivot. And then it falls to S3 from the previous day and then rises right back up. These are our favorite days where it just goes back and forth like that. Those are good days. And remember, and I'm legally obligated to tell you, that there are good days and bad days. For every experience that goes like this, there are experiences where it loses. Remember that with the chance of reward comes a chance of risk and loss. Does anybody have any questions about this beautiful chart here? Let's just look at that thousands of times. Memorize that. It makes me happy. Here's an S3 that was hit on Monday. No trade. Maybe one trade opened and stopped out immediately to the right. And that's the, that's the target, and it takes all week. Typically, a vortex trade, can I leave the stack in there for about a week. I've, I've started to leave them in a little bit longer than that, but if you have you know, stacks that you keep in your trading platform for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, that gets kind of old, and you can have a lot of trades that you forget why they're there. So I typically will leave them there for the whole week and, and wait to see if they'll respond. That's the question. Here's, the, here's one of those questions. Wouldn't I have got stopped out here? And the answer is, I would have got stopped out on one position that would have opened here, but then it never opened the stack until all the way on this day over here. And once it opened that stack, it's, it, it goes right, it accelerates up to the original profit target. So 
That's, that's exactly why I had that slide earlier on, is it looks like it goes against you a lot. Well, you're not even part of it right here. You're not even trade. You're not in the market right now. All week long, you're just waiting for it to come back up and start opening your trades in the stack. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to come back up and go. This is where my trades were stacked originally. It can't open them unless it goes into this area. And all week long, it didn't go into that area. So I couldn't open them. So that's a week where it took a whole week for your stack to open. That's very, very unusual. Most trades trigger and complete within 24 to 48 hours. There's a failed yesterday's vortex. You can see an example here where it rose up. It hit R3 for the previous day, started to fall, opened up trades, and then just took off. A little note that I keep to myself, when a currency pair fails to hit its daily pivot on the day that it was created, but does not hit R3 or S3 on that day, it is indicative of a market that is calmly marching in the direction of a new trend. Remember, if it hits R3 or S3, it's done something extraordinary. It's done something atypical. But when it misses its daily pivot, doesn't ever hit it, and moves away from it, but doesn't hit R3 or S3, it's moving away from the daily pivot and trending in a methodical, slower fashion. And that can be indicative of a trending market that it may not set up a trade for you and may not complete. Where's the vortex on this chart? Does anybody see it? There's that one right there. And then there's a the yesterday's right here. This one is easy to find because it just rises up, it hits R3 and then falls back down. This one's a little bit more difficult because it's a yesterday's vortex. This is April 26, 2010. You had a stack of trades. So this would be one of those examples where, hey, didn't this stop out? Well, no, because it rose up and hit here. You stack your trades, and then it doesn't come back down and start opening those trades until this area right here. April 29th, pound Swiss. Falls to yesterday's S3, rises back up. And then it rises all the way up to even the daily pivot from the original day. May 3rd, 2010. May 4th, 2010, some days you get, multi, you, get a, you get a stack on day one and then you get a stack on day two because it does it twice. Week of April 26th rises up to R3 in the first example, then it rises up, right, yeah, then you got week of April 26th. You have it rises to R3 on this day, falls down, falls to S3 here, rises back up to this daily pivot here, falls down to it's yesterday's here, it rises up, maybe opens some of those trades, falls here to S3, opens up some of the trades, stops those out, falls to S3 right here. Did you notice here that it missed this daily pivot um, without hitting S3 down here? That's indicative of a market that's trying... To move lower. Week of April 26th, this is the dollar CAD, rises and hits R3, doesn't quite come down all the way to the daily pivot, but probably gets into the buffer zone, rises to R3 here, maybe opens trades. Remember, it's only a 50 pip stack right in this zone here, so it may not have opened any trades. Doesn't complete until this area here, rises to R3, on this day falls down falls to S3, rises up, blah, 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 blah. 